Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and welcome back to another video on derivatives and the shapes of curves. So in this video we're going to focus on the next few objectives. Determine intervals on which a function is increasing and decreasing using its derivative. Use the first derivative test to classify critical points as a local maximum, local minimum, or neither. And we'll save the other ones for the final video. So if you remember, we left off at increasing and decreasing functions from the previous video. The main significance of the mean value theorem is that it enables us to obtain information about a function from information about its derivative. What that means is that we have already seen that if the derivative is positive, the function, the original function, is increasing on that interval. And if the function is decreasing, that means the sign of the derivative had to be negative. So now we can discuss what's called the increasing and decreasing test. If the sign of the derivative is positive on an interval, the original function is increasing on that same interval. If the derivative is negative on that interval, then the original function is decreasing. For the remainder of this section, we will be making what's called sign charts or number lines that will denote the critical numbers and their connection to the sign of the derivative and the behavior of the function of the original graph f of x. So let's try example three. We are going to find the critical points, not just the critical numbers anymore, but the critical points of the function f of x equals x cubed, subtract 12x, subtract 5, and also identify the intervals where this function is increasing and where the function is decreasing. Now, the derivative or the, the graph of the f of x is given, but we will not use that in determining where is the function increasing and decreasing. It's not a college algebra problem. We're going to use calculus. So from this previous theorem, we can use it to determine the sign of the derivative that will tell us whether the original function is increasing or decreasing. Okay, so let's start off by finding the critical numbers, which we can then find the critical points. So find, finding critical numbers. If the function is x cubed subtract 12x subtract 5, find the critical numbers first. of f of x. So to find the critical numbers, the derivative is 3x squared subtract 12. Notice that this derivative will always be defined. So f prime of x is undefined, never occurs. So no critical numbers from that point of view, but the derivative could equal zero. That gives us three x squared subtract 12 equals zero. Now you can solve this equation several ways because it is a quadratic equation. I typically like the factor. So factor out the GCF of three, then notice it's a, G, it's a difference of squares, x plus two times x minus two equals zero. So it looks like two critical numbers, x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. Okay, so now we're going to find the critical points. They're labeled in the graph, but here's how you can find the critical points. We know the x values where there's a horizontal tangent line because the derivative is zero. Substitute these x values back into the original function to find their corresponding y values, and then you'll have the entire point. So f of negative two, you'll find out it's 11, and f of positive two, 
you'll find out it's negative 21. So the critical points are negative 2, comma 11, and positive 2, comma negative 21. Okay. Once you have the critical numbers, then we can make a sign chart. And this is going to be a commonly used method from the re for the rest of the, this um, video and the next video. So a sign chart is just essentially a number line. So this is something I picked up whenever I took calculus. I'm going to label this number line the derivative, f prime of x. So this is going to tell me it's a sign chart for the first derivative. You plot the critical numbers on your sign chart in order from left to right. So negative 2 and then positive 2. So I forgot to write down this step. So make a sign chart for f prime of x with critical numbers plotted. So you might have seen sign charts before in pre-calculus. Now we're going to notice that the critical numbers divide this number line into three separate sub-intervals. So choose a test value, any test value that would be representing that interval, the sign of that interval. So you can choose negative 10, negative 5, negative 2.1, as long as it's on the left side of negative 2. How about x equals 0 between negative 2 and 2? and x equals 3 for the right side of x equals 2. These are called test values, and these test values are substituted into the first derivative because we want to determine the sign on each of the intervals. So substitute negative 3 into the derivative. So this is a step, substitute the test values into f prime of x to determine the sign. So f prime of negative 3, you'll find out it's 15, positive 15, so that on this interval the sign of the derivative is positive. That means the original function is increasing from left to right. Okay, it's so next value. Next test value is zero. Substitute this into the derivative and you'll find it's negative 12. So less than zero. So it's negative on this interval between negative 2 and 2, and that tells you the original graph, f of x, is decreasing. So f of x is decreasing on this interval. And do the same for the last test value. f prime of 3 will be, uh, I didn't actually choose 3 before, so you'll get 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27 minus 12 is 15, positive 15 which tells you that f of x is increasing again. So positive for the derivative, which means the original function is increasing. So now going back to the original statement, identify the intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. We haven't actually written out the intervals. So the function f of x is increasing on negative infinity until you get to the critical number negative 2 and also starting at the critical number 2 and to infinity for x values and then the function is decreasing between the two critical numbers negative 2 and 2 
and we also have the critical points. So this gives you an idea of how to use the theorem that states if the derivative is positive, the original function is increasing. If the derivative sine of the derivative is negative, then the original function is decreasing. And we also have an example of using a sine chart now. Okay, so once we can use, once we know how to use the sign chart, we know how to find critical numbers, and we can now make a sign chart to determine increasing and decreasing intervals. Remember in the previous video, we discussed, or a couple videos ago, we discussed a function has a local maximum or local minimum at x equals c, then c is a critical number of the function. So that meant if there was a turning point and there's a local max, or there's a turning point and you have a local min at x equals c, at that turning point, the derivative could be, or the derivative is zero or undefined. You could have a cusp or a corner or a rounded curve, a horizontal tangent line. But keep in mind that not every critical number gives you a maximum or minimum. We talked about the converse of that statement was false. And we had a couple examples where it was false. So we're going to discuss now what's called the first derivative test. We can use the sign of the derivative to determine whether the original function will have a local maximum or a local minimum. And here's the test. Suppose that c is a critical number. So x equals c is a critical number and the function is continuous. If the derivative changes from positive to negative, going from left to right on your sign chart or number line, then the function has a local maximum at x equals c. On the other hand, if the derivative changes from negative to positive at x equals c, then you have a local minimum. If the derivative does not change signs, so it stays positive on both sides of the critical number, or it's negative on both sides of the critical number, then the function has no local max nor local min at the critical number. We can actually basically extend our idea of using a sign chart to identify if there's a local maximum or a local minimum. It's a consequence of determining the intervals of increasing and decreasing uh, intervals for a function. So if the derivative changes from positive to negative on your sign chart, then we know that the function was increasing and then decreasing. That's going to form a local maximum at the critical number. If the function is increasing and then decreasing, or it's just, it's the op, that's just the statement I just said, I just stated. So you have a local maximum. And then there's a similar statement for a local minimum. So this diagram is a good illustration of when do you have a local maximum, when do you have a local minimum, and when do you not have a local max nor local min? We already talked about absolute max and absolute, or absolute minimum and absolute maximum, so we're not going to discuss those. But if you notice, the function is increasing on the left side of our first critical number, C1. and the derivative is positive. We learned that in the previous theorem. On the right side of the end, oh, and at the critical number, the derivative is zero. So f prime of c1 is zero. On the right side of that critical number, it looks like the graph is still increasing. And the derivative is still positive. So if the function does not change from, in, if it does not change signs, there is no local max or min. And we can see that in the graph. 
There is a horizontal tangent line, but there is no maximum or minimum at C1. On the other hand, between C1 and C2, or uh, between C1 and C2, the function is increasing. On the right side of C2, the function is decreasing. And there is a horizontal tangent line at C2. It's changing from positive derivative to a negative sine derivative. That is a local maximum at C2. Then the function is decreasing between C2 and C3, but between C3 and C4, the function starts to increase again, which means the derivative must have changed signs. So the derivative was negative on the left side of C3, positive on the right side of C3, C3 must be a local minimum because the derivative changed signs from positive to negative, or negative to positive, sorry. And then a um, couple more. Between C3 and C4, we're increasing. Between C4 and C5, we're decreasing. That means by the first derivative test, at C4, that is a cusp, C prime of C4 does not exist. But there is still a local maximum because the derivative changed from positive to negative. And the last case, if the derivative is negative, then it's decreasing. And if it's still negative, it's still de the, the original function is still decreasing. So even though the derivative is zero, it's not a local max or local min. So it's no extreme value, no extremum. It all, the local max and local min only occurs when the derivative changes signs. So let's try example four. The critical points of a function can locate where the function is increasing or decreasing on either side of the critical point. So in example four, find the critical points first for the function x to the one third times x minus four and determine where the function is increasing, decreasing, just like example three, but this time also determine where is there a local maximum and local minimum values. So these are, these are referring to the local maximum value and local minimum value. So these are the y values, not the x's. Okay, let's start off by finding the critical numbers of f of x. So we know we need to take the derivative to find the critical numbers. Use the product rule to take the derivative. First function times the derivative of the second, one, plus the second function, x minus four, times the derivative of the first, one third, x to the negative two thirds. So use the power rule. We know we're going to have to set this, e this derivative equal to zero, so we might as well simplify first. Um, I notice that there is an x in common of negative two thirds that can be factored out. Or let's, let's do this first. Let's distribute through the parentheses, and then we can factor out. So x to the one-third uh, plus one-third. x to the negative two-thirds times x gives you x to the one-third. Subtract four x to the negative two-thirds. Or four-thirds, sorry, four-thirds. forgot about the fraction. So four times one third. Factor out x to the negative two thirds. Which is the least power of x in common between the two terms. So if you factor out x to negative two thirds, or you know, you know what? Let's actually combine these like terms first. One x to the one third, one third x to the one third. That's four thirds x to the one third minus four thirds x to the negative two thirds. So we can factor out a 
4 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds. So from the first term, there is x to the first power left, because you, when you multiply, you add the exponents. And the second term, there is a 1, because we factor out the entire term. So this derivative gives us 4 thirds, I'm going to rewrite it, 4 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds x minus 1. That's the derivative. Or if you write it as a fraction, 4 times x minus 1 is in the numerator, and 3 x to the 2 thirds in the denominator, which becomes 4 times x minus 1, 3 times the cube root of x squared. That's the first derivative. We know we're going to have critical numbers when this derivative is equal to 0. The derivative is 0 if the numerator is 0. So 4 times x minus 1 equals 0, which gives you x equals 1. So that's one critical number. But it's not the only critical number. Keep in mind that if the derivative, derivative is undefined, then you also have a critical number. So the derivative is undefined if the denominator is 0. So 3 times the cube root of x squared equals 0. And you'll find out that x equals 0 if you solve for x. That is the critical number also. So we have two critical numbers, 1 and 0. So now let's make a sign chart so that we can identify where is the original function increasing and decreasing. So this sign chart is for the first derivative. We have two critical numbers, 0 and 1. Notice that it divides the number line up into three sub-intervals. Again, test values, x equals negative 1, x equals a half, x equals 2. It doesn't matter what test values you use, as long as it's in that interval, it'll work for the sign chart. So this is a sign chart for f prime of x. Okay, so take these test values and substitute them individually into the derivative, first derivative. f prime of negative 1 will be negative. That tells us the original function is decreasing. f prime of 1 half it's still negative. So the function is still decreasing, even though x equals 0 is a critical number. And then f prime of 2 will be positive. It will be a positive number. So the derivative is positive, which means the original graph is increasing. Okay, so let's write down what we found out about increasing and decreasing. f of x is increasing on the interval 1 to infinity, from the critical number on. f of x is decreasing on the interval negative infinity until 1. So negative infinity until 1 is where, it's, where the function is decreasing. So now we need to identify are there any local maximum or local minimum values in the function? And we can use the sign chart. So on the left side of x equals 0, which was a critical number, the function is decreasing. And on the right side of the critical number, you're still decreasing. So x equals 0 is not a local max nor local minimum value. But on the left side of x equals 1, the function is decreasing. On the right side, the function is increasing. So there is a local maximum, or minimum, minimum, local minimum, 
and it's f of 1, which if we go back to the original function, we will find out this critical point. 1 to the 1 third times 1 subtract 4, that is negative 3. So there is a critical point at 1 comma negative 3, and it's a local minimum, and there is no local maximum. Local minimum, no local maximum, and increasing, decreasing. So we've talked about critical points, increasing, decreasing intervals, and local max and local mins. It's just local max and local mins, like I said, are just an extension of using the number line or sign chart. All right, and then let's try one more example in this section, and it's the exact same instructions as example four. Find the critical points of a function x squared to track 3 times e to the x. Determine where the function is increasing and decreasing. And determine any local maximum or local minimum values. Same as example 4. So like I said, the graph is given, but it's not to be used. We need to use calculus to find the local max and local minimum values. So first step, find the critical numbers. of f of x. So we need to use the product rule again. So f prime of x equals first function times the derivative of e to the x is e to the x plus second function e to the x times the derivative of the first, 2x. Um, notice that you can factor out e to the x from both terms, and there is an x squared, subtract 3, plus 2x remaining. And this doesn't look, I mean, this is not in descending order, but if you rewrite it in descending order, x squared plus 2x, subtract 3, this will factor further. e to the x times x plus 3, x minus 1. Okay, so we will have critical numbers when the derivative is 0. So take the equation and set it equal to 0. e to the x can never equal 0. And here's why. e to the x equals 0. If you take the natural log to try to solve for x, you'll have natural log of 0, and that's not a real number. So there are no real solutions to e to the x equals 0. But then the other equations will give you x equals 3, or negative 3, and x equals 1. So these, are, these two are critical numbers. And notice that f prime of x is undefined, that never occurs. So there are only two critical numbers for f of x. Let's make a sign chart. So this is the sign chart for f prime of x. Plot the two critical numbers, negative 3 and 1. It divides the, the number line or uh, sign chart up into three intervals again. Let's use test values, negative 4, x equals 0, x equals 2. And these test values are substituted into the derivative to determine the sign of the derivative. So f prime of negative 4, that will be positive. So the original function f of x is increasing. f prime of 0 is negative. 
So the original function is decreasing. And last test value, f prime of 2 is positive. So the original graph is increasing. So f of x is increasing on the intervals, negative infinity until the first critical number, union, the second critical number, to infinity, so 1 to infinity. f of x is decreasing between the two critical numbers, negative 3 and 1. Okay, so then the last step, find the local maximum and local minimum values, if there are any. Notice that the function is increasing on the left side of x equals negative 3 and then decreasing on the right side. So there's a local maximum, and it is f of negative 3. Make sure you go back to the original function, because local maximum, local minimum are always referring to the y values. So if you substitute in negative 3 into the original function, it comes out to be 6e to the negative third power, which is approximately 0 0.299. So that's the local maximum value. And then there is a local minimum, because the graph is decreasing on the left side of x equals 1, and then increasing on the right side, so it's going to form a valley. So f of 1 is the local minimum, and it is equal to negative 2 times e, which is approximately negative 5.437. So we found the local max, local mins. We found the in intervals of increasing and decreasing. And by extension, we already found the critical points, because the critical points are negative 3, comma, 6e to negative 3, and 1, comma, negative 2e. So I hope that this video has helped you identify where the function is increasing and decreasing using its derivative and a sign chart, and also to use the first derivative test to identify where there's a local maximum and local minimum value for a function using also a sign chart. If you have any questions about any, any of the examples that we worked, please let me know, and as you work through the homework as well. And we will finish up this section on determining the shape of a curve using its derivative with the final video using concavity and the second derivative.